Hey everybody, Susie Q here and welcome to Q Aquatics and Exotics. And this morning I'm going to be going around giving all my animals water and food and everything. But while I do that, I want to tell you a story. And I would love your opinion on whether you think this was an impulse buy or a rescue. How I came about my mud skipper. So, hopefully it won't be too chaotic. I want to get all my guys fresh water, misted down, and fresh salad before I go to work. But I also want to tell you a story. And in that story is going to be how I made this palindarium. At least how I made the base for the palindarium that's in my story. So let's get started. So the story starts when I'm walking into my local fish store. I do this all the time, a couple times a week. Unless I'm getting... Um, feeders delivered to me. I bounce around to three or four of the local fish stores that carry feeders a couple times a week. So I walk into my local fish store and as I'm waiting for them to get about a hundred pinhead crickets and 50 large crickets, I was walking around and looking and they had an enclosure called tree frog enclosure. It was a 10 by 10 by 10, maybe 12 by 12 by 12, a little box, one of those little box terrariums. But it was tree frogs, so I thought, great. Actually, it was set up like a very tiny palindarium. So, I don't know if you guys have ever seen my videos on my amphibians. I like frogs. So, I was checking out the uh, tree frog enclosure and trying to focus on them. And I see these adorable little creatures in the front end of it. There was four of them. And I'd be like, dang. It was pretty dark back there, but they looked like mud skippers. And I could tell that they had just gotten a shipment in because you know how there's like all these floating bags and all the, the tanks and plants were still floating. And so I knew they just got a shipment in. So I'm like, let me ask somebody. And I also know that you can't put the mud skippers in with tree frogs. So I was like, but I don't, I don't think those two you would mix together. I don't know why a tree frog would be in brackish water, but I went and asked one of the employees, are those mud skippers in there? And she said, yes, I think they are. I, I said, it says tree frog. She goes, oh, shipment just came in. They must not have labeled everything yet. So I said, well, uh, how much are they? I'm interested in them. Okay, at that, at that point, I guess I answered my own question. That was an impulse buy. I've always wanted mud skippers since I saw Tazawa Tank's video on them. They've intrigued me. But I had no intentions of getting one. I had no enclosure set up. I wasn't prepared in any way. But when I saw them, I'm like, I have never seen these in any of my local fish stores. I'm jumping on it. So I said, can you, and, but then before I jumped on it, I figured I better find out how much they are because they're like $200 a piece. I'm not going to say one all four. So I said, could you check on this, please, how much they are? I'm interested in them. That if, in case anybody else walked by, like, they're mine. Let me go give the crust to get goes their food. So she came back and told me that they were $30 each. I said, I'll take all four. But I'm not sure of... One of them was acting strange. Looked like it may have passed. But me, not, I have never had any experience with mud skippers. I don't know if, like, when they get scared, do they just freeze up? So I said, I, I will take all four, but I think one is gone already. So why don't you bag up the three? She went to get the bags and by the time she came back, she was scooping them up. And the, so now there was two that have already passed away. And I said to her, I said, just, I said I'll just take the two. Um, I don't know, what kind of mud skippers are these? Are these Indian? Are these African? What is the salinity level in this water because I want to go home and match it. And she's like, oh, I'm not sure. Let me find out. And disappeared again. I'm like, oh my gosh. To say she wasn't sure, the guy who knows about him isn't in the store right now. So she had no information on the salinity level, if at all these mudskippers were in brackish water or were they in fresh water. She had no idea if it was Indian mudskippers, African mudskippers, I figure I have a community of fish fan that would be able to help me. I'm, I'm not too worried about it. Just let's move on. She bags them up and as I'm walking to the register, the third one passed. There was one mudskipper in this bag, and the, a live mudskipper, and the other one was already gone. 
I was starting to panic now thinking, I'm going to spend $30 on this one live mud skipper and he's not even going to make it to my car. But it was worth me trying. Oops, spraying. So I honestly didn't think that the lone little guy was going to make it. And I was, I was so anxious at this time to get him home. Now keep in mind, I hadn't been freshly researching mud skippers because I didn't know where I was going to run across one. I just know that they're kind of territorial. They need a large enclosure. They're brackish water. I knew that there was a difference between Indian and African mud skippers. I don't know what that difference is yet. So I didn't really do my research. Didn't have a tank yet, but I felt compelled to do something. I had to do my best. Already three were gone before I even got them up to the register. This little guy, which I'm calling Skipper. I'm calling Skipper. I felt I'm gonna give him the best chance I have. It's within my power. Felt a little conflicted though. So the part of me was like, don't you think letting somebody else get a chance who actually knows about mud skippers would be better? Yes, I think that would be. I don't think this mud skipper was gonna last another hour at that fish store. My main concern was getting that mud skipper home. So I did get him home. I got him home and I wanted to get him acclimated, but to what? I don't really know what the water inside his, this bag here. I don't know what the water is inside the bag. Okay, so I'm not sure when I'm acclimating him. I also gotta get my tortoises inside because it's gonna rain today and I'll be at work. So I gotta bring in Bruce Wayne. Okay, hi, buddy. So I don't quite sure know how to acclimate this mud skipper because I don't know what the water he's in. So my best bet is in this paludarium, my thought process, I'm gonna use the water that's in this bag and the fresh water that's in there and start making brackish water and add it gradually. That's my best bet while I get his tank, what, what should be his real tank ready. Don't even have that ready yet. But I'm concerned because the fish are dying in this water. So I put him in my palindarium. As you can see, I tried to put him on top and he went in the water, that's okay. He'd go anywhere he wants. I gave him one or two baby guppies just to keep him company. <laughs> and then I made up the brackish water. I started pouring it in slowly to make sure I could find the right level. So now I gotta get the tortoises out. Like I said, it's gonna rain today while I'm at work. I don't want them getting wet. <laughs> so now that I have the mud skipper in the little palindarium, I gotta start making up this 55 gallon. I have a 55 gallon tank that Sonic was in. We're gonna go inside for the day, huh? Some peanut butter and jelly. So I did get some footage on the GoPro because I wanted to see how it was acting. I was hoping to get some clear pictures. It's very hard. I don't want to shine light on this guy. I figure he was traumatized already through shipping. And I remember Tozawa saying something about they don't travel well. So I just got some GoPro footage and to try to see his behavior and try to see if I can get you guys to help me identify. I think it's an African mud skipper, but I wanna make sure, but he's by himself and he's in this tiny palindarium, although larger than the one at the local fish store with four in there, but I know that means nothing because they're just on display for sale. So I, I don't judge. I've never had a fish store, a reptile store, I'm not judging. And I'm not critiquing, because who am I to critique? And you, Feel free not to critique mine. I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> so anyway, to make a long story longer, he's in this, uh, I did get a little bit of footage and then I, I made the 55 gallon, brought it down halfway because I was trying to figure out how am I going to make a land? Like I said, I wasn't prepared. Somehow or another, I got to make a land area, even if it's floating docks in this tank but I don't know how high they jump. I don't know how much space I need between the top. So I brought down the water. 
can start to get in the salinity to anywhere between 0 0.003, 0 0.05 salinity levels. So I wanted to uh, do some more research, but get him into brackish water in case he was in fresh water. But obviously when I went to go catch him, I think I traumatized him more. Well, not traumatized. I spooked him a little. And He's in the, down in the mud because I was got a little scared. I was trying to net him out. And he hid, so I got a little worried. So I kept working on the 55 gallon, knowing I'm gonna have to just get him out and get him in. He's in this paludarium. I got a couple small guppies in there with him. GoPro footage didn't show me much of anything, but I'm working on the 55 gallon tank. I've got a it's going to be his tank, his 55 gallon. It's at 1.003. It's got a couple of guppies in there and some mollies. And I'm going to finish building it. Try to figure out how do I build up a whole sand side that's not going to be anaerobic bacteria seeping through. So I got to build some kind of false bottom that's good with water, which I've done. This paludarium is in now. Let me show you how I built the base. So all I did is take some of this pla plastic mesh and I weaved it together. I weaved it together like it w like I was sewing it together and made a bottom box. Filled it up with these um, clay pots. Now granted it did take a little bit of time and then I put m built a cover out of light diffuser and I built a little cover for it. Now that became the island that you see here in this palindarium. So I'm thinking can I do that for the 55? It would have to be at a much grander scale but I certainly don't want to fill it with a lot of substrate. I want the substrate to be kind of like on top of the water. So I'm going to build the palindarium out of this 55 gallon. And I'm thinking telling a story while I do my morning chores is really hard. That's how I built this palindarium and this floor. So I think I'm going to try to use the same kind of model, but not using plastic mesh. I might just use a large, like a large filter box that they use in ponds just to build it up. Cause I want to build it up like six inches before I put the land on it. So he was good in here. I had to go to work the next day. Like it was very late at night. Next day I checked on him. I put my security camera on him so I could watch him at work. Yes, I did that. Uh, and I watched him. He was very active moving around. I came home, there's only one guppy. So I know he ate something. Um, I kept missing it down. He kept going up on the land area so he could get around, but I'm telling you, that's like less than a half a gallon. Maybe it's a half a gallon of water because of how big the land area is. I knew I had to be quick. So I made the 55 gallon brackish water and that heater's the turtle heater so it's covered because I know they like to jump on things so I didn't want anything that this guy was going to jump on to be hot. Two floating turtle baths basking stations which I don't really use for my turtles because when they land on them they don't float anymore and they still stay wet but he is really good he's very lightweight I got a magnetic one here I built up three large rocks here and I have um, I think that's a Zoomed land uh, basking station there a small filter there I have air pumping here but this tanks always had that so I just keep it there and if you like this kind of content here Oh, that was a shameless plug, wasn't it? Anyway. So I had to get this to be... And my biggest concern I had is getting him out of here without traumatizing him too much. He is very fast. So I just had to be very calm, very methodical. I could not videotape it. Open the door, I waited a while. Put the net in the water, then I waited almost like 45 minutes. I just was very calm and methodical. Got him over here. I'm going to show some more GoPro footage because he went right to the bottom in the corner. That was fine. But I figure I moved the GoPro to the top because I know he jumps up and down all the time. Because I know he jumps up and down all the time. So once I put on the top basking station and I stepped away, I went to work. So when I came home from work, I watched the GoPro footage. And as soon as, and you could tell us, like, I think it was like within three minutes, of putting that camera up there he walked right up to it was checking it out my opinion seems to be a very inquisitive intelligent creature so i was watching him and after i watched him for a couple times watched him for um probably about 45 minutes on the gopro obsessively over and over watching every move he made let's see if i can see him down there he still goes down in this corner 
This is his corner. That's his like underwater corner. And if the mollies get too big, I will remove them. Believe me. And if he gets bigger than the mollies, bye. But I just wanted a brackish water. There we go. That's the corner that he kind of chills in when he's underwater. And then above water he goes between this zoom ed, these rocks. And I usually keep this enclosed on top too. So if he is jumping, yes, he could technically get out tiny ones, but it's a lot more difficult. A lot more difficult. But I noticed some strange behavior when he was sitting on the basking, and it took me a while to figure out that Milo and Skipper were having a thing. And if you watch his GoPro footage, he's the Mudskipper is absolutely following him. He's watching him, following him. At one point, I think he went to attack him. I could be making that up because obviously I'm uh, just watching. Hi, bud. Hi. <laughs> I'm just watching a Mudskipper acting like I know what the thought's going on in his mind. But it sure looked to me like he was observing this guy going back and forth. This guy was observing him. He, I know he sees things moving. I'm thinking I'm going to put something up here so he can't see all the activity that goes on in here. And there's not a whole lot. But now that the tortoises are inside today, they'll be moving around. I got turtles, baby turtles over here that move around a lot. He sees movement and he thinks food. He's just a teenager and, he, and he's just a little one. And he just wants to eat, eat. And look what you do with your salad. Dude, you pushed it all over your floor. I know, baby. I don't... Have, give me a minute. So, isn't that amazing? Do you see him? Now, I did a slow motion, too. He is jumping. Is he not... Is he attacking him? He looks like he's attacking him. But he's absolutely keeping an eye on this bearded dragon. So, I thought that was so fascinating. I wanted to make sure I shared that with you. So I don't know if he's going to make it. I'm going to give it my best shot in helping him make it. And I want to build this up to give my best shot at giving him a place that he can enjoy to live his life out. I'm going to assume he's wild caught since they don't captive breed in captivity, to my knowledge. Like I said, I barely started scratching the surface. Well, thanks for coming along with me on my morning chores and listening to my story. I hope you really like my mud skipper. And let me know in the comments below, impulse buy or rescue? Let's see if you agree with me. It's definitely an impulse buy with rescue undertone. <laughs> Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.